Welcome to this demonstration video of the DataPipe project. The purpose of this video is to explore how authorities could potentially exploit digital product passport data in the future. This demo was developed in close collaboration with the Surpass project. This imaginary example is provided for demonstration purposes only. First, a few words about the DataPipe project. In DataPipe, we explore how authorities can access and use external business data sources for various purposes. The challenge is that this data is stored in the digital infrastructures of different businesses. In this imaginary scenario, we explore how digital product passport or DPP information could be used in customs risk analysis. For example, to address environmental concerns. Here we look at the export of second-hand electric cars with the aim to prevent the export of end-of-life vehicles, which could be considered to be waste. First, we assume that the battery DPP is mandatory. Second, we assume that the car producer issues a car passport voluntarily. Third, we assume that the vehicle identification number, also called the VIN number, is mentioned on the export declaration. Fourth, we assume that the battery state of health data may be one of the indicators that customs could use when deciding whether a car can be considered end of life. Finally, we assume that the battery in the car has not been changed. The imaginary scenario runs as follows. When producing a specific car, the car company orders a battery. The battery producer issues an identifier for that battery, and at the same time, publishes the DPP data on its system. This data then becomes accessible via a web link to anyone with the correct authorizations. The battery producer sends both the battery and the link to the battery DPP to the car producer. The car manufacturer produces a new car identified by a specific VIN number using that battery. In our scenario, the car producer decides to create a car DPP that contains the link to the battery DPP. We now have two product passports that are linked together. When the car producer places the car on the market, he registers the car with the authorities by providing the car's VIN number and the web link to the car's DPP. The car is sold. The owner of the car uses it. At some point in time, the owner decides to export the car to a country outside the EU. We assume that one of the roles of customs is to prevent end-of-life vehicles from being exported. During risk assessment, one of the indicators used could be battery state of health. If the battery state of health is indicating end of life, customs may consider this car as waste and ban it from export. From the export declarations that customs receives, it has only the VIN number of the car, but no information on the battery's state of health. How can customs access this information? Let's assume that there is a data sharing system through which customs can request the data it needs. As a first step, customs uses the vehicle's VIN number to obtain access to the car DPP through the Car Registration Authority. Thanks to the link to the battery DPP contained in the car DPP, customs can obtain battery data, including the state of health data. Customs then proceeds to risk analysis and decides whether or not to ban the car from export. While decentralized data sharing systems may require additional effort when being set up, they offer important advantages such as extensibility, flexibility, and combinability. Extensibility means that new data sources can be added to the system easily. For example, a tire DPP, an electronic systems DPP, or an engine DPP. Flexibility means that customs inquiries can be easily extended to exploit these new data sources. Combinability means that manufacturers of complex products can combine data from different suppliers into their DPP. 
But how does this work in real life? For the technical implementation of the DataPipe demo, I made use of results of earlier projects and open source tools, and followed the steps as shown in the slide. We demonstrate that there is no need to start from scratch, and that quick progress can be made by deploying existing technologies. Here we give some impressions from the technical demonstrator. We show the use of open and aligned ontologies, sharing events via the data sharing infrastructure, and constructing APIs and querying data. The system as shown can be easily extended to many sectors by adapting the aligned ontologies and the corresponding API configurations instead of generating and configuring completely new APIs. It is important to highlight that in the scenario we present in this video, we look beyond what is currently possible or required for customs given the current regulations. We take the view that a wealth of information is and will be available in the future. Authorities may benefit from this information for circular economy and sustainability monitoring. The flexibility, adaptability, and combinability properties of the system make it future-proof. If you are interested in the technical details of this demo, you can watch also the DataPipe developers video or visit the DataPipe GitHub page, where new demo videos will be posted in the future. Further information is available on the DataPipe website.